transition to the message. As I mentioned, I'm not preaching today. I love to preach. It's one of my passions, uh, but I'm very thankful that I'm not doing so today. And the reason I am not preaching today is because we have two very special guests who are not really guests, but they are key members of our church family, Dave and Chris Carlson in the second row. And I have shared, again, we were a portable church for eight years. We launched in 2010, and God got us in this building. Absolutely. It's all God. It's His, it's his glory. But I, I have said over and over again, the human reason why we're in this building is because God used Dave and Chris, who gave two years of their lives to serve as missionaries here stateside, worked on staff of the church for free, just to say, we feel God's called us in this season to help get you from being a portable church to having a permanent home. And so uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. And so they're going to be preaching today. And the reason they're doing that is we're in a sermon series called Best Gifts Ever. And we've been talking about spiritual gifts. And a few of the gifts I've been highlighting have been on healings and miracles over the past couple weeks. And we have, instead of me preaching about that in general, let's hear from them. And so they're going to be up here to share their testimony. But before they do, we're going to watch a video. And this has been featured around the world. You can find it on the internet. It's on on the TV stations across the country that are are a Christian-based TV stations. And 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 sometimes, see, I have an engineering background. When I've seen these healing testimonies on TV, I wonder, like, did that really happen? Like, is that real? Or is that just kind of made up? That's just me as a skeptic. You need to know that what you're going to see today on on this healing testimony and what you're going to hear from them is the real deal. It is the real deal. And the reason I can say that is because Kelly and I knew the Carlsons before the healing happened. And so back, I have to take you back to 2009. I'm on staff at Kensington Church over in Troy, and Kelly is a small group leader for women. And I, I... heard this person again back in 2009. We planned the church 2010. So back in 2009 or so about Chris Carlson and, and how she was just a really sick, you know, had some debilitating illness or disease. I couldn't even like pronounce. That's all I knew about her. All, I, I also knew it was a big deal when she was actually able to make it to the small group. Say it was, it was 10 weeks long. She made like two of the sessions out of the 10 because she was so sick. She couldn't get to the small group. And so just she was incapacitated. So that was back again around the 2009 or so time frame. A year later, I met Dave, um, and God began to weave our stories together, and they have an incredible story. So we saw what you're going to see on the video. It's a real deal. What you hear from them is a real deal. And so we're going to start off by watching this healing testimony, and then they're going to come in and connect the dots for you. And I have to say right now, just to plant some seeds, what miracle do you want or do you need God to do in your life right now today? What miracle, what healing would you like? And I just pray that stirs up. And then at the end of the service, we're going to offer an opportunity after we take communion to pray for people. But right now, if God could do anything in your life, what mountain do you need to move? What healing? What so we sang, you're the God of miracles. We want to testify to that today. So with that being said, I'm going to close my mouth. Let's watch this video, and then Dave and Chris will be up to preach. Out of nowhere, I had like this lightning bolt of piercing, burning pain. It was the most excruciating pain I'd ever felt in my life. Come into the upper part of my left cheek, and it just pierced straight through my face. It was 1997 when 25-year-old Chris Carlson started having the attacks. At first, they lasted a few seconds, but every day they returned, more painful and more often. So when Chris would have one of the, the shocks, the, the spikes of pain in her, in her face, I could see it instantly. It could, her eye would close up, her, her face would kind of scrunch up. My face would swell up with the pain, and so literally my face would constrict. Doctors couldn't find the cause, and the faintest touch on her face or exposure to light would trigger an episode. The pain from her sensitivity to light became so debilitating, she had to leave her job as an engineer and isolate herself from friends. 
Our house was becoming darker and darker and darker. I mean, a light bulb would go out, we wouldn't replace it. And so literally it was dark, but emotionally it was also dark. Finally, after six years, doctors discovered Chris had a rare chronic pain condition called TN, or trigeminal neuralgia. It affects the trigeminal nerve that carries sensation to the face and brain. It's also known as the suicide disease. Because people just can't get out of the pain, and so they will eventually take their own life. I mean, it was very stressful. It controlled everything about our lives, every decision we made. For the next nine years, doctors treated Chris with medications, injections, and surgeries, but they provided only temporary relief. Chris and Dave say during this time, they prayed for everything except healing. We pray to um, get the right doctor who would know what was going on. We pray to uh, get the right procedure, but never did we know to just pray to take it away. So with all her options exhausted, Chris asked God to help her cope with the pain. You have to help me. I can't do this. Well, if I have to live with it, God, you got to help me to live with it. You know, I can't do it all by myself. So you're going to have to step in and help me. In August 2012, Dave encouraged her to attend a healing service hosted by a local pastor, Tim McCarthy. The guest speaker was Marlene Kleppies, a woman healed of cerebral palsy. Pastor Tim introduced her by showing her story that once aired on the 700 Club. And then afterwards, Pastor Tim said, Marlene would pray for people if you'd like prayer. And so I look at Dave and I'm like, okay, let's go. It's time to go home. He's like, are you kidding? You are going up for prayer. Reluctantly, she went forward. I said, look, I don't believe in this whole Halem business. And she says, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll believe for you. That, that's not a hard task. And then I remember feeling that it was very important that I touch the side of her face. And then she asked to touch my face. And nobody ever touched my face, but I let her. So she puts her hand on my face and says just a simple prayer. She's getting very bouncy and joyous, and she's like, oh, I didn't expect that. There it is. And so, of course, I don't say, yes, I'm feeling heat in the back of my neck. She finishes her prayer, and I say, okay, thank you very much. Have safe travels home. As the couple headed home, a tingling sensation spread throughout the left side of her face. For 25 minutes, I had that, and then I had nothing. My face just opened up, my eye opened, and I had no pain. She's like, I don't, I don't feel any pain at all. I'm like, like, any pain? And we were both just confused. <laughs> you know, where's the pain? <laughs> it had been 15 years, and it was gone. Chris was in awe of what God had done. In that moment, I was quiet. The pain is gone. But there was no reason for me to be healed. I wasn't in the Word all the time. I wasn't actively asking for healing. I wasn't, um, you know, I didn't have my ducks in the row, you know? And I was healed only because He loves me. Chris and Dave say the miracle made them reevaluate their priorities. They quit their jobs and sold their belongings. Today, they travel as missionaries and spread the Word about God's healing power. He's absolutely incredible, isn't he? That I can go from being so sick to this is just amazing. And we have the most blessed life. Wow. I haven't watched that video in quite a while. <laughs> and um, we've seen it twice now today. Wow. I mean, what kind of God does that? I can't even begin to tell you the awesomeness that is our God, that he would do that for us. And the beauty is we're nothing special. We're just ordinary people with this extraordinary God. 
really and truly just loves us. That's it. He just loves us. And so right here, right now, as you bow your head and we just posture our hearts to you, Lord, just as Marlene prayed for me, I pray that you soften our hearts today to your voice, to your love, to your desires upon us. I thank you for the gifts that you just pour out over us. Each and every person in here today has seen your gifts. They know your gifts in their heart of hearts. And so I say today is the day that we come even closer to you, Lord. And I thank you, Baba God. I thank you that you're right there, ready to take us into the biggest bear hug we've ever received. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. That's how I felt. The biggest bear hug ever, right? Because all of a sudden you're going from looking like this first picture to this. It's absolutely amazing. It was shocking. It was confusing. But he did it. And he did it for us. And thank goodness, because the pain started six months prior to us getting married. When, and we look like this. It was, it was the time of Princess Diana. And I had the little haircut. I think it's quite cute. I think we're so cute. And I had the little haircut. And I, the veil was on this little tiara. Only mine was made out of cardboard with the fabric wrapped around it. But it was still the Princess Diana look, right? It was pretty cute. And so thank goodness that God stepped in. But Six months prior to this picture is when we got the pain. Yeah, we, we were both, um, I know a lot of you guys don't know us, and we, we were both engineers at GM in our, in our 20s, um, had just got engaged, and we're, we lived up in Flint, and we were driving down the road one time, and Chris just screamed out in pain, just out of nowhere. And like, what, what happened? Like, I don't know. And it, it went away. And... Um, but these spikes of pain just started coming more frequently. Like they, they came more often, they lasted longer, and it was progressively getting worse over years and years and years. And we went to a lot of doctors, um, and none of them ever could figure out what it was. Yeah, and so one thing led to the other, and General Motors, for a God reason, sent us to Australia for a couple of years. I was completely sick. I should have never been there on assignment, but I made it. And it was in Australia that we finally got the diagnosis that you guys just saw in the video. It was trigeminal neuralgia. So try because the nerve comes in three different areas of your face. It comes off of the brainstem, shoots out into this little opening in your jaw, into the face, and it's your sensory nerve. It's the nerve that gives you a baby's touch, like your new baby, Tony. It's the nerve that gives you the hair on your face. I just got bangs recently, folks, because I can. I can get hair on my face now. And plus, we're just too cute, right? So, And so it's the nerve that gives you the sensation, these beautiful winds, you know, beach wind against your face. And it's so intricately designed. It's so intricately created. If you can get a load of our God through this, this nerve, they say, is a cotton candy size strand of nerve coming up out of the brainstem and into the face. And it gives us those beautiful sensations. What a God that would create us with such intricacy that he puts a nerve like that to give the beauty of the wind across your cheek, to give you the beauty of a baby's touch. What a God that would create such intricacies 
all across our physical bodies. Our physical bodies are made with creation, with to function just as God created it. And even more than that, he didn't stop there. He created us with plans and purpose. Right? He created us with the desire upon his heart to bring his kingdom, and that's our creation. Now, fallen world, I happen to have an artery pressing against this little nerve. And for me, what that meant was shocking pain going throughout my face. Eventually, it led to spiders running up and down my face. It was so interesting though, it went halfway down my nose. I got spiders on this side and no spiders on this side. Serious, what kind of God knows how to do that? I can't even draw a stick figure, folks. I mean, this is an amazing God. And so, um, it, and then it progressed to uh, sensory input like light. And then it pro progressed even further into food input because food is just chemicals in our body, right? So it got to the point where we also couldn't eat such thing as onions or lemons or oranges because it would all elicit the nerve pain. But we're happy. We finally got a diagnosis. Yeah, so the, the, what's weird about this condition, this trigeminal neuralgia, is heavy touch feels normal. And the lighter the touch, the more it hurts. Feels like extreme pain, light touch, only on one side of your face. Um, and you can imagine there's a lot of challenges with living with that because like one of the most painful things you can experience is a light breeze, right? Or even hair brushing your face. And so we were determined to get it fixed. There are a couple of possible solutions that, that, that work for some people. And so we headed off to the Mayo Clinic, uh, which was, there was a doctor there who was like the number two guy, neurosurgeon in the world for trigeminal neuralgia. And over the course of a couple of years, had four different brain surgeries and a number of other treatments. And every time one of two things happened, it, got, it would get better for a few days and then come right back, or it would actually get worse. And we, we had a few, you know, went through a huge surgery just to make it worse a couple times. And, um, and so it was, it was very challenging, and we eventually got to the point where they tried every possible treatment, and then they told us that that's it. Like, that's every tool in the toolbox that we have. You're going to have to learn to, to live with the pain. Um, one of the last treatments that they gave Chris was something called a glycerol injection. I don't yeah. know if you want to tell them about that. Yeah, so at this point, I am 34 years old, and they uh, shoot the nerve up with glycerol, which is a toxin. It's like antifreeze in your car, right? It's meant to scar the nerve away so that way you don't feel the pain signals. And that's exactly what happens. You go through a two-and-a-half-hour procedure for me, sit up at the Mayo Clinic brain surgery ward with all the other people that have staples and shaved heads, and we bless them even now, Jesus. You sit up for four hours while this toxin runs through your face. It's the most excruciating pain I've actually felt, even worse than the TN. And um, what ends up happening is it's like a steak burning away, that steak sizzle, if you can imagine that sizzling, burning away your nerve. And then afterwards, it was all numb. Like you go to the dentist and you're kind of numb, you know? And I'm like, this is amazing, finally, no more pain. Like it was numb and everything, but I'm okay with that. There's no pain. So I'm hugging the doctors, I'm hugging the nurses for four days and the pain came back. And that's when they said, sorry, it's all the tools we got in the toolbox. And we came home and my husband bought me blackout curtains and a light bulb would go out and we went and changed it because too much sensory input. And it was at this point that my husband started doing everything for us. He would do all our cooking. He did all our cleaning. He would do our laundry. He'd take my clothes off, give me drugs, and put me to bed. And he stayed. 
He stayed through all the pain. It got darker and darker as we lost more and more friends. Chronic disease is very difficult. And light bulbs. And light bulbs. We lost our friends and light bulbs. With, uh, Dan mentioned with this small group uh, that we'll get to in a minute how Chris probably made it to 20% of them. But that was our, that was our life with everything. You know, 20% of anything we tried to do. Go, go to see a friend, go out to eat, holidays, you name it. We, this, this disease kind of, um, like we planned our whole life around it. Mm -hmm. You always had to have an exit strategy. You always had to be willing to cancel at the last minute, you know, which we did a lot of the time, which is why you, you tend to lose friends. And um, it's really hard. Um, being friends with someone with a chronic disease. Um, we had a couple in our life who would stick it out with us, and one of them, she is actually from Australia, she invited us in 2010 to head to this new series that was coming out. It was called Thursday Nights at Redemption. And so Pastor Dan was actually at Kensington Church and he had had a healing. If you don't know about his story, check it out. It's absolutely incredible. And he just, after his healing, he dug deep. Like he wanted to know everything about it. He is an engineer's engineer. Like he just went for it. And came up with this series called Thursday Night at Redemption Church that is actually online you can get it we go to it all the time because we send it to people all over the world if they ever have questions about healing it's one of the most comprehensive looks at healing please preach it again just do it again it's absolutely amazing we'll send people to it it's it's such a great study on healing and so we were invited to go we made what, like anything two of nine of them i think we made it to two because <laughs> But the one night was good. But, but yeah, they were the ones we saw were incredible. And of course, we saw the rest of them online and have listened to them many times, um, which I encourage you to do. Um, and I, just, to, just to give you, you know, the one simple little thing that just blew my mind because I, you know, I didn't have, I didn't understand the theology correctly around healing because it's not talked about in a lot of churches. It wasn't talked about where I grew up. And... Um, the one that struck me the most um, was a s really such a simple thing, and so it should have been so obvious, I think, in, in hindsight. Um, it's the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. right? Because we, um, we had grown up believing um, or, or with the mindset that, well, God is, is sovereign, right, and omnipotent, and he can do everything, and, and so everything that happens must be exactly how we wanted it to happen. And, and that's a struggle if you have a chronic sickness. That, that belief is a challenge, and it's a challenge if you're healing for people, with it, for, or if you're praying for people for healing, because, well, how do I know it's God's will to heal them, right? That's a good question. And so Dan, you know, he, he walked through the, uh, the Lord's Prayer line by line, and this is Jesus telling his disciples how to pray, right? So it's, it's pretty significant. And, and he says, this is how you pray. Um, pray to God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then Dan challenged the group. He said, so think about what he's saying there. Where is he saying that God's will is done? Clearly, he's saying it's done in heaven. But what he's telling us to pray that, our, that God's will will be done on earth like it's done in heaven. So where is God's will not done? Most of the, all the time. Now, it's obviously not done some of the time God's will is done on earth. Maybe all, most of the time, but sometimes it's not. And that's why we're supposed to pray that it is done. And furthermore, how do we know what God's will is? Well, God's will is done in heaven. He says so. Now, is there trigeminal neuralgia in heaven? No. Is, is there any disease in heaven? No. So what's God's will when it comes to disease, right? Now, this is us, and at the time, we took an hour after this session driving around debating this. We're like, 
I can't believe Dan said that. How could he say that, right? Like, well, like, can that really be true? Can That's, that be true? And if so, how come no one's ever told me that? Right. <laughs> Why hasn't anyone ever told us that? And so after a good long debate, it planted a seed. It was just a seed in our heart that, oh, all right, maybe that's so, but we're in survival mode, right? We're getting up every day. We know what the day looks like. It looks like pain. It looks like darkness. It looks like, uh, I guess Chris is going to stay in bed all day today. And we're just in survival mode, making it happen. And at this point, I am now 36 years old. I'm having to quit my job at GM. I'm losing hope on the ideas of dreams, such as having children. And things are getting harder and harder in survival mode. I will say my husband never lost hope for us. Somehow, he decided there was hope and we would eventually get it. And so his prayers just continue to be the hopeful prayers that we would get there. We would get it. God would make it happen, whether it be through some other doctor. We prayed for a lot of doctors, and we still pray for you doctors. We prayed for a lot of medications. We thank God that there's medications, right? The natural meeting, the supernatural, and this collisive amount of healing. We prayed for it all, but we never just knew to pray for it to go away. Like, why not? I don't know. But it was not in our theology. It was not in our background. And so fast forward now to 2012. Where were you in 2012? Surely you guys are born by this point. Um, I am a day from 40 years old. 40 years old. And the, the day before, my 39th, the last day of my 39th year, I show up for a, a women's Bible study that Kelly Cobb had invited me to. Now, she knows the, our story. She knows I'm not going to make it most of the time. I think I made it a couple, two or three times because my husband drove me. By this point, I'm also not driving much, especially at night. And um, he would drive me, take me to the women's Bible study. And I look like that first picture that we had up there that night. Um, luckily, I didn't look like the 2005 picture, but the first picture. And so the women are all there, and Kelly's there. And of course, they're like, okay, well, let's introduce ourselves. And they start asking me, okay, you're looking a little, right? Let's see, what's this, what's this story, right? And so... I introduce myself, I tell him about the trigeminal neuralgia, I tell him about the surgeries, and um, these women all are like, great, God wants to heal you. Can we pray for you? We just know God wants to heal you. We'll pray for you. Can we pray for you? God wants to heal you. This is all these women talking to me. I'm like, you are the craziest people I've ever met. I mean, seriously, right? They're like 15 years of chronic disease called the suicide disease, and you're going to tell me that God wants to heal me? I was absolutely flabbergasted. And the craziest of all, we had several people there. Sue Haley was there praying. Several women were there, all believed God wants to heal. The craziest one of all, was my Sonia Kohler. If you haven't met her and gotten prayer from her, just pray with her because she believes God wants to heal everyone. And by golly, I found out that he does. Anyways, she decided that she was going to mentor and disciple us and to keep telling us that every single chance she got, God wants to heal you. And she would say it. I would come to the Bible study, she would say, God wants to heal you. One day, I actually got out. I was feeling pretty good about myself. I had a baseball cap on with huge sunglasses, but I was out of the house. I was so happy. And I was at Meyer walking down the chip aisle, and all of a sudden, here comes Sonia. And she's like, ooh, you're wearing those sunglasses. You must not feel very good today. God wants to heal you. Let's pray now. I'm in the middle of Meyer shopping. Let's pray now in front of the tortilla chips right? And she does it. 
she completely interrupts her life with the belief of God to pray for me. Ordinary, nothing special, me. She had the faith to tell me that God wanted to heal me. She decided in that moment her life was interruptible. She could mentor us, she could disciple us, and she started, didn't she? Yeah, and so she kept kind of twisting her arm to go to this <laughs> Tuesday night healing meeting. Pastor Tim's, if you've ever heard Dan talk about Pastor Tim, amazing, amazing, amazing. Man. And we were pretty skeptical about that, very skeptical about that. And we, she, we did go with her a couple times, and um, we may have been gone on our own. She wore off on us, I guess, <laughs> wore us down. And, um, and Pastor Tim would just, every, every Tuesday, he's been doing it for 40 years, and would just talk about what the Bible says about healing and, and pray for people for healing. And then one day, they announced they were going to have a guest speaker coming in who was from Missouri, and Chris is from Missouri, and, and she wanted to go, but, but when I got home that Tuesday, she didn't feel good and, and tried talking me out of it. <laughs> Too sick to go to a healing meeting. It's a common problem. <laughs> and, but I convinced her to go. I, you know, I twisted her arm now. I, I took over for Sonia, and I twisted her arm, got her in the car, and uh, we went, and, um, and you saw in the video this, Marlene had an incredible story mm -hmm. um, of her own healing. And, and after she told the story, and the Pastor Tim said, well, Marlene, I'll pray for people now, Chris turned to me and said, let's go home. And she said, oh, I'm ready to go. We heard it. And he, here's what's interesting. And this is, as you guys press into prayer, and especially as you pray for others, I think this is an important, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Antidote. Mm -hmm. Yes. Data. Data point. Chris was terrified to let someone pray for her. Now, she'd been prayed for many times. Mm -hmm. So how do you explain that in that moment she was terrified to let someone pray for her? I don't know. Yeah, but I, I was. I was just ready to leave. I was, my mind was going out of control in this particular meeting. And so finally Dave gets me up to Marlene, beautiful woman of God. She's another one. She interrupts her life to bring kingdom wherever she goes. She will give her testimony at the drop of a hat. She will go. We met her in Omaha, Nebraska one time to pray for someone. She is just going, and she mentors, and she disciples people into the healing power of prayer. And so um, she, I get up to her, and I think it's crazy, but so I had enough faith of a mustard seed to at least ask for prayer at this point because my husband dragged me the rest of the way and I tell her like look I don't believe in this whole healing business and at that moment that's where I was that's all I had I'd had the prayers in the past that well you must have sinned right or you must not have faith for it or all the usual prayers of the past in that moment as I went to get prayer from this beautiful woman of God I just don't, I can't do it. I don't believe in this whole healing business. And Marlene said the most beautiful thing. She's like, that's okay. I'll believe for us both. And it was amazing. All of that just dropped off of me. And since then, as, as we've thought about it, it goes with Mark. There's a passage in Mark. I'm going to paraphrase. But basically, you've got these four guys, right? And they're so passionate about their friend. They're like, all right, we're going to take the friend, the paraplegic, on the cot. We're going to drag him through the town up to the house where Jesus is. And we're getting this guy to Jesus because we believe, we have faith. If we just get our friend to Jesus... He'll be healed like all the masses were being healed with Jesus, like what Lisa just led us in worship, right? He will get there. So they get there. They can't get through the door. So me, I would have been like, oh, oh, it's too bad. Yeah, I got to go home. It's my bedtime. I'm a pumpkin. It's my famous line. I got to go home, go to bed. No, they climb up to the roof. And it says in that scripture, they actually dug out the roof. 
to get their friend on a cot down the roof to Jesus. I mean, come on, can you imagine this, guys? I did roofing for three years with my dad, three summers. I can't imagine, I can't even haul shingles up a roof, much less a guy on a cot. This is amazing that these friends have that passion, that they're willing to interrupt their life in that way, that they're willing to have the faith for another, for one of God's beautiful chosen people to say, nothing is stopping us. No roof is getting in our way. You are going. So they lower him down from the roof, and Jesus looks at him, the four. He looks at them first, and he looks at the man, and he says, by their faith, your sins are forgiven. That man in the cot didn't have to have the faith because we got it, right? You go to school of kingdom ministry to get it. You go into a small group. This small group changed the course of our life. God within these women in this small group changed our life forevermore. I didn't die in premature death. I live and declare the works of the Lord because the small group decided to interrupt their life and pray for me. This small group gave them the, the tools, everything they needed to say, God loves you and he will heal you. Plug into the small groups, guys. They will change you. They will change how you, are, how you look at God in the world. So Marlene, she says, okay, I'll believe for us both. Can we be that friend? Can we believe for you, for you, for you? Can I? Yes, today I am that friend for you. But tomorrow you be the friend. You can do this. We have the faith. We know our God. We've seen him in our lives. He is that good. And by our faith, you are healed. This, she touches my face, and it, serious, I'm not kidding, God knows me. I am an engineering skeptic that has to be proven. I am from Missouri, and in Missouri, it's the show me state. So he didn't just miraculously in that very moment heal me. He decided to give me a supernatural glycerol injection like I had had previously at the Mayo Clinic to make it good and done. And 25 minutes, I had that sensation running down through my face, and then nothing. My face just opened up by the miraculous, amazing love of our God. Because I'm an ordinary person with an extraordinary God. I wasn't in the Word all the time. I wish I could say I was. I wasn't in the Word all the time. I wasn't actively pursuing healing. I was a people pleaser trying to placate Sonia because she kept dragging us everywhere. Uh, please be a Sonia. Please use that testimony to drag somebody to the ever knowing love and pursuit of our Lord. She drug us everywhere. I was people pleasing her. I'm like, all right, fine, we'll go, right? God healed me because he loves me. Yeah, so as you guys press into healing, I think there's some really good nuggets in there that, you know, you're going to encounter people who are like us, right? And don't give up on them. <laughs> right? You may be like us. Don't give up on yourself. And certainly because the Bible now tells us, we know this to be true, that as we get to go around now, because our whole life was changed, we are the resurrection. We are the redeemed that we talked about. And you guys have all been there, right? You have had resurrection moments. Your life has been redeemed about Jesus. And if you need it again, let's pray for it. Let's do it again, right? You'll be resurrected again, and he'll do it again. He'll do it again. And guess what? He does it again. Like he does it all the time. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And so we get the opportunity. We get to go around the world. We get to pray for people. We get to share this story. Because because testimony has power. The Bible tells us that evil is defeated by the blood of the Lamb, which is most of it, right? Jesus actually went to the cross for us. He took the beating for us. We're healed by his stripes. The blood of the Lamb 
and the words of our testimony. It's the and that defeats evil. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready. Like he's got nothing on me. Suicide disease victory. Evil's not coming. You know what I'm saying? And then it goes on to say, even greater than that, that the testimony of the works of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Do you know you get that? He'll do it again. It's the spirit of prophecy. Where we know healing has come, it will come again. It is the spirit of prophecy. So my life verse that God gave us as we went out is, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord, Psalm 118, 17. And so we do this as life is ministry and ministry is life. It's a playground, like in the Vineyard Church. They say everybody gets to play, right? And we get to play, but it's not the only thing we do. Yeah, so Dan asks us what we do sometimes, because I quit my job in 2013, like the video talked about. And um, yeah, a lot of what we do is, I, I think you would call it discipleship. And I know this church has a strong um, passion for discipleship and for healing. And so we go out a lot, and, and we tell people about our healing, and we pray for them, and we teach them how to pray for others. Um, and we work with a lot of, of missionaries but, but more than anything, we try to find out what God's calling them to do mm-hmm. and do it whenever we can to help them. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like I, I did the math on yeah. it. He's and, an engineer. And if we spent the rest of our lives pursuing a ministry, pick a ministry, uh, whatever, um, and pursue that, and we could put in between the two of us maybe 60 man years of time to do that, um, advancing the kingdom, changing the world. Or we could spend that same amount of time helping maybe, over the next 30 years, helping maybe 20, 20 year olds who want to go do that and have their own calling on their life. Mm-hmm. And they'll put in 1,200 man years. That's a good return. And so that's what we do. We, we, we work with a lot of uh, young people, and I, they're so, I'm so excited about the future. I see so many millennials and, and Gen Zs who are passionate about God, and they need a lot of encouragement. And the best thing that we can do is just tell them the mistakes we've made so they don't make the same mistakes. And that's 90%, right, of we discipleship. Yeah. And, and we, have, we have some amazing friends now who... Are, are going. They're going and working in garbage dumps in Nicaragua and, and orphanages in Ukraine. And we actually had the, the privilege of having lunch on Thursday with, with a couple of friends of ours, Jack and Grace Twitty right here, who came out today to support us. And Jack is, is from Rochester, and they just happened to be in town. And so we were so lucky. We got to meet with them. They are, they've been training for the past year to go be full-time missionaries in the Middle East. This woman who is what, a, just a handful, couple weeks away from giving birth, and they will be heading to the Middle East end of January, 1st of February, to, to go, and as they go, they will disciple the nations in the Middle East. God bless you, sir. <laughs> as they go. Yeah, so, if, you know, if, if God is calling people to do things like that, and they actually listen, and they actually do it, I'm going to do whatever I can to encourage them and help them. Yes. And I think that is, is what we're all called to do. And as we see that, and we see that in our lives, it becomes very apparent that, wow, it's actually not that hard, right? Like, you can have a cup of coffee with someone and say, oh, God wants to heal you. Let me pray for you. That's all it takes because it's God's problem. God does the heavy lifting, right? It's God who's fighting the battles on our behalf. It's God who um, is so inside of us through the living Holy Spirit that Peter, as he walked, his shadow healed them all. God is passionately pursuing us that we prosper and be in good 
health. He wants health. He created our bodies to be healthy. He wants healing. And so how easy for us to say, okay, I can pray for that. Okay, I can believe for you. Okay, I can have the faith for that. And to step into the lives of each and every person that we meet and say, yeah, because of me and my prayers, I'm going to encourage you into all that God has for you into all that God created you to be. Can we do that, church? Can we step up and do that? That's all it takes. It's life is ministry, and ministry is life as we go. And in this moment, in this place, I want to do that for each and every one of you. We want to do that in this place. I know Dan wants to do that in this place. This house, this temple of God, is anointed with the love of Holy Spirit and the saving power of Holy Spirit right right here in this place. And so as we bow our heads and we just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That even before you took the cross to save me for forever, to save us for all eternity, to save us, to have us walk and be with you for eternity, even before you took that cross, you walked this earth and you took the beatings on your back, you took the stripes on your back so that we may be healed. You walked this earth and took the stripes on our back so that by your stripes we are healed. In this moment, as we cry out to you with our heart's desires, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for overcoming our bodies. We thank you for rising up within us. And we thank you for the the faith, the mustard seed of faith to at least get up out of the chair and ask for prayer. That's it. That's all it takes. Just ask for prayer. We thank you for that amount of faith. We thank you, Jesus, that you are good, that you are good. And we love you, Jesus. You're so, 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 so good to us. In your precious name, amen. 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 We believe for you. We get the privilege of praying for people all over the world. And we get to believe for migraines. We get to believe for trigeminal neuralgia. We believe for backs. We believe for knees. I love knees because they start bouncing around. Those are so much fun. But even greater than that, there's a slide there of a little baby in the family because for whatever reason, we didn't get to have our own natural children. But we somehow have the faith and we get to pray for supernatural children. This particular couple was five years deep into infertility, and this is little Elijah. He's down in Texas, and we have more than him. God has blessed us with a few little children now that we get to be a part of, and it's so much fun because that's what God does. And so we bless you guys for prayer. Please come up and see us and um, be with us and let God just talk to you in this moment. Yeah. Thank you. Amen.